Redditors who knew men caught on to catch a predator before the show. What were they like? I didn't know the person directly, but I worked at a company that had an employee caught on the show. This was particularly problematic, as the company was Nickelodeon Animation. Everyone who knew the guy was actually pretty shocked. It was particularly rough for his girlfriend at the time, as she also worked at the studio, so there was no hiding from it. For their part, Nickelodeon instituted rigorous background checks for every new employee after the incident, with zero tolerance for any misdeeds involving children. Those background checks are what keeps this lore alive though, as the process if much more intensive than any other studio. Oh I can actually answer this one. He legit was always trying to sleep with men that were way too young for him, albeit just barely legal, and we made jokes all the time to him about how he was going to wind up on that show. We literally called him Herbert. It was the opposite of a, he was the last person I would suspect, situation. Rapey, extremely rapey, was someone from my hometown in NY. Went to school with their younger sister. After he graduated high school, he did everything he could to hang out with much younger kids. Always wanted to buy booze for us or roll up a joint and smoke us out in his van. Never touched me but there were rumors of him molesting a 12-year-old in sleepaway camp. Guy the first knew wasn't on the show but was caught in a huge operation with undercover agents. He was very very arrogant and covertly racist. I was really good friends with his brother, but I hated him. I should not have, but I was pretty cruel to him over the years. I just felt like he needed humbling and I would take every chance to do it. He finally admitted he hated me for it. Anyway, he tricked some poor girl into marrying him by acting like a good Christian guy. They started having problems early on. I thought she'd leave him but she stayed. Years later he's caught trying to meet a 13-year-old for sex. Had tons of CP on his phone and computer. Currently rotting in jail. He grew up on a farm and would dress up the pigs and sheep in women's lingerie and take photos of them. One day he brought the photos to school to show to some other kids and one of them got freaked out and told the teacher, who confiscated them and he got expelled. I don't know if he ever went to prison or what happened to him. Well I know, or knew, someone who's probably gonna end up on that show at some point. We became friends in high school because neither of us could date anyone, then eventually we finally got lucky. We both broke up with our sows once we graduated. I took some time off to focus on myself, and he took some time off to um, help out, this one freshman learn, how to drive. The last I heard he was 22 and officially dating a 15-year-old while, helping, various others who were a hell of a lot younger than her. I reported him but this is the same school who forgave a teacher after he invited a student to his house where him and his old college buddies drugged her and gang raped her, so I doubt anything is gonna come of it. But the good news is this is gun-loving, Bible-thumping, redneck country so if he fucks up it will most likely be his last fuck up. Okay so he wasn't on that show but a Facebook group of hunters outed him. This lad was in my rugby team, he was weird. Just straight up weird, but in a way that made you feel sorry for him. Being a progressive group of lads and inclusive to everybody, we welcomed him into the team, made him feel part of the group. He was always scruffy, he looked like a worm, he was the type of kid that at school bullies would have wet dreams about. But like I say, our team prides itself on having a place for everybody, just not him anymore. Then this video circulates on Facebook where he's been outed and admitting to messaging what he thought was a 13-year-old girl for sex. Nobody was surprised but everybody was sickened. But yes, Matty Nash. He was creepy and kept trying to get me to go to Burning Man. When I told him I didn't think that was a good idea because I had a 10-year-old kid at the time he said I should bring my kid. Now I don't think he was interested in my kid at all but I did tell him I thought that would be super creepy to bring a kid to Burning Man with a bunch of people on E. This was in 2001. He came over to my house under the guise of talking business and then put the moves on me. I turned him down and sent him home to his wife. My cousin was creepy at age 5 and it just multiplied with time. He was obsessed with girls but was a total incel. I was one dude's raw in university. He was a seriously weird dude, but was relatively friendly, came out to all of the campus events, and was not suspected of being a predator at all by any of us in the dorms back in those days. He was busted on TCAP about two to three years after I graduated, 
so probably sometime 2003 to 2005. One of my high school classmates was on the show. In high school he was actually one of the more popular kids. Kind of one of those funny asshole guys, but wasn't a bully. He played sports, was on the lacrosse team with me. He did drink and smoke. My mom and his mom were pretty close. Honestly he wasn't a bad dude, seemed relatively normal. A few years later he had the privilege of meeting Chris Hansen. From what I remember watching, my classmate looked legitimately confused. The girl told my classmate that she was 18. When he showed up he was informed she was 17. I have the unfortunate experience of knowing a man who wasn't on the show but had spent nearly a decade in prison after he raped his daughter and had CP. I didn't know him before, only afterwards, and he is a jerk. He acts like he's the smartest person on earth, loves Trump, spends 100% of his free time on his computer where several girls in countries where the age of consent is much lower or non-existent are in contact with him. He has a girlfriend who is 42 years younger than him. She would be about to age out for him since she is about to be 21. They have been together for a few years, but she looks 12 and has the smallest feet and hands you've ever seen on an adult. Literally US size 5 woman's shoes are too big on her. She baby talks to him and they role play as grandpa, granddaughter as foreplay. I hate that I know this. The guy treats everyone as if they are stupid. He is the biggest male Karen in history. He causes a scene everywhere by yelling at retail workers and demanding a manager then acting like they both are so far beneath him. I don't know if this was a warning sign or not but his ex-wife is basically child size 2 at 4, 9. I knew the cop from, I think Florida, Alabama that was arrested on the show. He had guns and rope in his vehicle when he went to meet the girl. Super creepy stuff. When he was a sheriff's deputy in Florida, he would come into my job frequently. So, I didn't know him on a personal level, but I did talk to him on a regular basis. He was a really nice, respectful guy. He seemed to be a good cop too. I was shocked when I saw the episode. You never really know what goes on in someone's bedroom. Here is part of the episode. https colon slash slash u2 dot be slash 83 boac fb 9a. My mom used to know one of the guys. Said he was always a nice guy and quick with a joke. She said she was not really surprised to see him where he was when the show was on television. Yep, she had a lot of good things to say about Chris Hansen. Not on show. Vice Principal paddled me for saying that something, sucks, as in, is not good. I was kinda shocked anybody thought was as a paddable offense. A few years later he was arrested working at a middle school where he was trying to get boys to jerk on camera. It was the 80s. Cameras weren't cheap. He told them it was because a girl liked him. I knew his kids, played D&D &D with them. Once I got sent home from high school because there was a hole in my jeans, about one inch square, just above the knee. The other vice principal was wearing something very low cut with lots of cleavage. Also got paddled for being late to class, in high school. Used to work retail with a guy in Scotland who got caught in a sting by an independent group here. Was doing my thing stacking shelves when I overheard two customers marching down the aisle sounding oddly suspicious. Initially I thought they were plotting to steal before it turned out the dude had out of date Facebook info about which store he worked at and they came looking for him. He was originally hired as a good friend of my old boss and had been invited along personally to several nights out with a few of us. Within a few hours of the group visiting the store, there was a Facebook live video of him being confronted at his house. From what I was told my buddy who was a manager was advised by our old boss not to mention anything about it on FB as some high up people within the company were all too aware of the fact had been hired specifically as a close personal friend of a store runner and were extremely worried about it getting out and causing them bad PR. P well he, 40s at the time, wasn't on the show but he was busted in a police sting. Thought he was meeting a 14 year old girl at a park and he had a bag of lingerie for her. He had been chatting online with an officer posing as the 14 yo. Creepy stuff. Anyway, he was part of my friend group at the time. I wasn't super close with him but I had spent some time around him in pretty normal group activities. He was a bit weird but most of our group was so he didn't really stand out. He would make some pretty odd comments about women, and especially younger women, at times and usually get mocked for it but I don't think any of us thought he'd do anything like he did. 
He was married, happily to the best of my knowledge and had a really good government job. When news reached our friend group it was a pretty big shock to all of us but it definitely brought to mind some of the weird shit he used to say. Pretty sure everyone pretty much immediately blocked him on social media. I don't know how much time he spent in jail if any. I know he lost his wife and his job. Last I heard he had moved across the country. He doesn't come up in conversation much anymore but anytime he does we refer to him as pedophile Bob. Every response I've read has nothing to do with to catch a predator and are just random people talking about how some family member was weird with them as a kid. It Mandatory, he wasn't on the show, but. Former co-worker, he quit after the company we worked for suspended him for a week without pay after I reported him for saying all gay people should be gassed like the Jews in the Holocaust. He was a proud red pill incel, and clearly a lovely conversationalist. When he wasn't saying shit like that, he was bitching about how anyone and everyone was lazy and stupid, blah blah blah. Found out shortly after he left that he's a third tier, or whichever is mostly likely to recidivate in our state, registered sex offender. He was convicted of raping an eight yo girl. Not at all surprising. Eat shit and die, Trevor. I didn't know anyone from that show, but I did know a guy who got caught for the same thing. It was the early 2000s. He was my friend's husband. He met a 13 to 14 year old girl in a DND chat room when he was in his mid 20s. Groomed her, traveled to another state to see her, then took her to New Orleans. He got caught, a lot of years in jail. My friend divorced him. He was extremely egotistical, and I always hated him. To the right people, he came across as charming. He used everyone and everything he could. Named himself after a popular vampire, but spelled it wrong. I remember throwing his stupid red lens glasses into the street. He was the type to buy booze for teenagers. Not on the show, but the headmaster at my school, who left the year before I started thankfully, had a whole documentary. Look up, Derek Slade. He didn't make it on the show, but my best friend was secretly hooking up with minors after we had graduated high school. He got caught in the same way Chris Henson did his show except it wasn't Chris, it was the local police waiting for him. Twice in one week, before we knew what had happened my buddies and I bailed him out. Anyways, he was a cool dude but we were never the popular kids. We got along with everyone and didn't really have enemies or awkwardness with others. Just typical students, we played sports, went out to parties every now and then, and hung out with friend circle on the daily. He never dated anyone from our high school though. It was always someone from a different town or something. Whatever, no biggie we thought. Looking back, I realize now these girlfriends he always talked about were much younger than us. He would reach out via MySpace, Facebook, late 2000s, early 2010s, and then meet them when parents weren't around. Anyways, a year or so after graduation his younger bro tells us he's been arrested and needed bail money. Being best buds, I figured bail first ask questions later. The next day, I was supposed to meet up with him to ask about what happened but he was arrested again. Different girl, same scenario, local PD posing as young girl. This time though, I didn't help with bail A. I was broke and B. I heard for the first time about the charges and was hesitant. His family eventually bailed him out and he took off across the border. My understanding is he still had a thing for younger women, and or girls, and eventually married one after getting her pregnant. Doesn't do much, often bouncing from job to job, and haven't spoke to him since his arrests roughly 10 years ago. Ah, stunning. Remember the fine young lad who got caught not once, but twice? Went to my high school. Had a class or two with him ever knew one of them, but a guy who sat behind me in high school Spanish ended up being locked up for making child porn. He was a weird guy. Like, almost normal but just real awkward socially. He was never on the show, but I know a guy who got busted for molesting at least one little boy at the daycare he worked at. Didn't know him particularly well. Just saw him from time to time at Yu-Gi-Oh! regionals and shit. He was good friends with this creepy juggalo guy and both thought they were hot shit and constantly talking down on people. I never particularly liked either, but the eventual molester was mostly under my radar. Just some jackass I occasionally saw. I hadn't thought of him for years when one day my friend messaged me the news story of his arrest. Apparently the juggalo was defending him until the very end. 
despite having kids of his own by then. Not on the show because we're not American, but there was a group that was looking for people accessing certain sites and my cousin's ex was one of them. She actually found out by checking his computer, but it was horrifying to her. I was a kid around this time, so what I remember from him is that for the most part he was quiet. One thing is in our culture we kiss each other's cheeks as a greeting, but when I did it I think I missed or something. Don't remember exact details, and the whole family laughed lightheartedly. I looked back at him but there was this weird look in his eyes I couldn't exactly understand as a kid, which freaked me out immensely. I remember kind of running away in a weird embarrassment afterwards, but it's a memory that stuck to me for my whole life. A few years ago my cousin confessed about why they really broke up all of those years ago, and I just remember that specific moment and felt so scared like I did as a kid. It's a face I don't think I'll forget. Weren't on to catch a predator but my ex-stepdad was a pedophile. Before he went to jail for his third time, my mom didn't know when she married him, we would see his family a lot. His brother was always very nice and liked having us over. They would sometimes get weird with each other and his brother would make comments about my body every now and then. After my ex-stepdad went to jail his brother was caught on an online chat sting. He somehow got my contact info when I was an adult and thought it was appropriate to tell me he was attracted to me when I was 12. Weirdly they both didn't like each other being alone with young girls and at least once referred to the other one as a pedophile. I was too young to really understand it back then. My cousin wasn't on the show but was caught in a similar situation where he was texting a young girl and Leo's took over her phone and set up a meeting with him. He's been in the pen for close to 10 years and up for parole soon. His daughter and stepdaughter have filed saw charges against him so hopefully he'll never get out. Growing up he was a complete weirdo who picked his nose and ate it in middle school and high school. Edit. I deleted the nerd reference because that was unfair and he really wasn't a nerd. Just a very odd individual. He wasn't on the show but went to middle school and part of high school with a guy who went on to rape a 12-year-old girl. We went to school out in the middle of nowhere, so everybody knew everybody. He always seemed normal enough, if a bit quiet. Very tall guy. What I do remember is that he dated another girl in class for several years. The relationship was unusual since most relationships at that age averaged about two weeks. I remember her being very quiet, and always seemed to be a bit depressed. They finally broke up when he moved away. Amazingly, she became much more cheerful after that. It was only then that I realized she was cheerful before too, but changed once they started dating. I had my suspicions that there was something bad in their relationship, but I never pried into it. Fast forward years later, and I got the news through the grapevine about what he'd done to some poor girl. Thanks for watching. See you later. Thank you.